Hey everyone, Bilal from Zenfinity.net, and in this video we're going to talk about Unity programming versus regular programming. This is a subject that can cause a lot of debate on whether Unity is even for beginners, or if it'll just cause them to program improperly, and whether Unity should be used at all, like should I just use Unreal Engine or Game Maker or some other engine instead, just because of the weird kind of programming that goes on in Unity. Um, so to clarify, when I say Unity programming and when I say regular programming, for regular programming I mean think of a C Sharp or a Java application that you just make that's new, um, and it'll just give you this main function uh, where it just expects you to type whatever, you know, just pro default programming, the world is yours, do whatever you want, install libraries, create libraries, uh, call whatever you want to, start a game loop, start an event loop, do whatever. Um, and typically when you're doing any sort of programming in game development, you're going to be doing object-oriented design. Um, and with, you know, with exceptions, of course, there's also functional programming, but it's not commonly used in game development. Um, so when you're programming, again, you're going to be using this sort of object-oriented design, and you're going to be creating your architecture all around, where you'll eventually be making API calls. So if you want to, you know, for example, make some sort of vector library, um, and you want to create new vectors, you'll include that library, you'll be like, you'll write um, new, new vector, you'll make any kind of variables you want to, and go from there. And if you're programming your own game engine, for example, um, you'll write, at some point, your main function is going to hit a game loop where it does all this sort of stuff. Now, um, in Unity, you can, of course, use all of this object-oriented design, uh, you know, including polymorphism, composition, inheritance, everything. Um, but the weird part is that the main function is gone. It's not there. You can't use it. Um, but of course, of course, it's you know somewhere high up in the stack where once you open Unity, it first runs some things and then it'll eventually uh, do this loop. And when I say open Unity, I mean open the open a built game, a game created using Unity. Your game will always have a main function uh, that will start off everything and then eventually hit a game loop that at some point can be exited. So in Unity, all that happens. Um, but rather than putting that in this main function that we just said you can't access, uh, Unity gives you these mono behavior APIs, uh, well, API, where you can only access all this stuff through a game object. So in any ga Unity game, you need to have a scene with game objects so you can put anything inside of the actual um, game, so you can have anything in the scene. And that weirds out new people um, with good reason because that's you know it's it's pretty different from from just you know programming where you don't have to worry about these these components um, and you know there's also multiple weird things about the components like you can't use constructors you have to add components um, and that kind of stuff just you know it, it, it messes with your object oriented design uh, it's no longer object oriented design it now has the aspect of unity added to it so it's kind of unity object oriented design um, and so to get this sort of thing right you need to uh, you know I guess a brush up on all you know, there's experience there's uh, you know thought processes thinking it through designing all this kind of thing all these kinds of things to make sure that you don't mess up when you're writing Unity applications. Um, so, I mean, that brings up the question of, does it hinder programming skills? And I'm going to say it can, um, 100%, but it doesn't have to. And it might not matter that much, because you might listen to some people and they might say, I wouldn't recommend uh, starting with Unity because, well, it'll damage your your programming skills, but in my opinion, it's not really, it, it, it can do that, but it's not going to permanently damage them. People will seem to talk as if your programming skills will be permanently damaged, whereas any developer needs to constantly be learning new things. So you can't have your skills be damaged and then stop there. Otherwise, I mean, you're not going to go on. You're not going to, you know, you have to, you have to make it somehow. You need to keep learning. And even if Unity does mess up your skills at some certain point, um, 
you can always learn all of these other programming skills and get yourself a good base knowledge of what programming is and what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, what should I refactor? You know, how should I encapsulate things? And all these other object-oriented design um, fundamentals where you're trying to make sure your code is good and not just working. Um, but yeah, so Unity can, of course, hinder programming skills in that regard. But in my opinion, it's not too big of a deal because you can fix it. So it, to give you examples of things that you might end up doing if you're new to Unity and you're, you know, you're an OK programmer, you know, you're sort of new, like maybe you're, you've been programming for a year or two, um, and you know, you know how it works. You understand the concepts of object-oriented design, but maybe you don't employ them all the time. Um, and it can make you do things like using this game object .find method. Um, and that's typically a problematic method to use because of its time complexity. Where, I mean, for example, if you have 100 game objects and the 100th game object is the one that you're looking for, then you've just searched through 100 game objects to find one using this game object .find method and that will hinder performance. And you could have completely avoided this if you just, uh, you know, for example, wrote your object-oriented programming uh, architecture. If you wrote it in a way where you wouldn't have to end up using your game object dot find, um, and that can be in different ways. Some people will say, you know, you could use static methods. Some people will say, don't use static. Uh, it will cause this. Um, It'll cause your things to be too linked together, your objects to be linked too, um, too much together, basically. Uh, and that's something you would sometimes want to avoid so you can reuse your code. But I, I digress. Uh, the point is you don't want to um, use gameobject.find often just because of the you know, performance impacts. That's just an example of something you might mess up if you are new to Unity and a way where your programming skills might uh, you know, be hindered a little bit if you're not being careful. So w what I do is I make sure I actually keep understanding um, how to make normal applications. And you know, I've trained uh, in, in making regular applications, web applications mostly. So I understand um, how all the object-oriented design typically works, uh, and I make sure that I understand it. And how can I how can I design an object-oriented structure that will communicate with Unity well? And now that I said that, I want to bring to attention um, how mono behaviors uh, kind of have played their part into all this. And a mono behavior is basically a component, but it's you know in programming. Um, a component is what it's referenced to in the Unity editor. A mono behavior is just the class for what the component is. Of course, there is a super class called component, but you know you won't you won't write a component. You'll write a mono behavior to attach a component to some sort of object, um, game object that is. But uh, the point is, if you're writing this uh, mono behavior and you're writing this object oriented code in the back, what I do is I'll make my my structure very you know well and robust, and then. I'll work on the mono behavior API in a way where I can make sure that I don't have to use it too much. I can just write my my object oriented code over here, and then I can talk to the Unity, you know, to to the game using the mono behavior API, so that my object oriented code will go right to the API so that it can hit Unity over here. Um, and the reasoning behind that is just because you don't really. If you have a lot of components, it can make your Unity scene cluttered, and it'll make it more difficult for you to go around and search for things, because you might fill your component with too many methods that can just be abstracted. The big differences between Unity programming and regular programming is how do I communicate with this external application, this greater framework where it's determining this is going to happen next. Um, and you know it's a question of how should I communicate? 
you know, with Unity, you have these mono behavior APIs that you're going to communicate with the game through, and you don't really have too much a choice. You, you, you have to use some sort of mono behavior API to do anything in Unity, just as you would need to use a main function if you wanted to do something in a Java application. But that's going to be it for this video. And if it helped you out or you know, if it made you think about it in a new way, then make sure to leave a like. Um, and hit the subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this. And definitely leave a comment of if you think this video format is good, because um, obviously it's new. This is actually the first one that's going to be a you know, face cam uh, talking about a concept. Um, and if you want to make your first game, like if you're new, there's going to be an ebook for free over here. Uh, there will be a link for it in the info cards over there. Um, and it's just about every tool that you need to create your first game. It'll tell you, you know, everything from Unity or to Visual Studio and all the other art applications and audio. Um, but I will see you next time. <laughs>